torque steer on a boat. I'm not talking about a, a big cow-like animal with horns. I'm talking about torque steer. That is when you are driving your boat, and I'm going to use a single outboard for this example, and you let go of the steering wheel and it goes to the right, or perhaps to the left. It, most often, though, with a single outboard motor on a boat, it'll go to the right without an adjustment of a certain part on that outboard. And I'm don't I'm not going to make this a physics lesson or anything in chemistry, but I'm going to take you out. We'll look at the back of the boat. That my Astro Glass has a big problem with torque steer. I just got it, had it out on the first river trial. And if you let go of the steering wheel, it's right away. You're going to the right. You're going in a circle. And I'll show you how to correct that. Now, the components you use to make this adjustment has a lot of different names. And I'm not going to get into what is exactly right and what is exactly wrong. I'm going to show you what it is, what it does, and how to adjust it. So this tab, we'll call it that. Some people call it a trim tab. Some people call it a torque steer tab. Some people call it torque steer adjustment. In most cases, it's also a sacrificial anode that you never want to paint. That's on there for a reason, although some people will say that shouldn't be on there, just take it off and throw it away. I've never used them. Well, that must be why every motor manufacturer and outdrive manufacturer puts those sacrificial anodes on their motors because you don't need them. So we're not going to get into that either. If you don't like them, don't use them. That's it's your boat, your problem. What it's called? Maybe we'll call it a Yakamoja Fujiyani prognostication adjustment tab. Call it anything you want. Some uh, motor manuals are called a trim tab. Some will call it a torque steer tab. Technically, a trim tab is something that's mounted on the back of your boat that raises and lowers to adjust you on plane. That's technically what a trim tab is. So we're not going to get into that whole debate on exactly what it's called. I'm going to show you this device and how to adjust it and how to correct that torque steer. Next thing you'll hear me talking about is left and right and front and back. Okay, that's for you landlubbers. Yes, I know the left is port, right is starboard. The front is forward, and the back is aft, or ass, either way, aft. So I may use those terms interchangeably. I'm trying to keep this simple for those that are not in the nautical frame, and they're not going to be able to easily recognize port and starboard, and fore and aft, and etc. And just in case you're wanting to learn that, a good way to remember that port is left is port has four letters. So does left. Port, left. Starboard, right. Ass center of the boat, aft. Front of the boat, fore. So now that we got that out of the way, I'll take you out. We'll look at the back of the boat here and I'll show you how to make this adjustment. Okay, on the back of your outboard, you'll see a tab like this. This happens to be a Yamaha. But this tab right here it serves a couple of functions. It'll correct that torque steer. And it also functions as a sacrificial anode so that if there's any galvanic action or electrolysis going on, it will corrode this instead of your motor. And uh, this is a soft material. It's a cast zinc aluminum alloy type stuff. And I can feel at the bottom of this where there's been a little bit of electrolysis going on at some point, And it has corroded a little bit of that. This is replaceable and they're not really expensive. I think a... Uh, sacrificial anode tab for this Yamaha here is about $25 or so. So to correct that torque steer, this needs to be adjusted. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. Okay, on the, uh, on the, on the Yamaha. Now you're, if you have a Mercury or a Johnson or an Root or a Suzuki or a, some other brand, yours may be different. There's a little rubber cap right here. Sometimes you can pull them off with your finger. Otherwise, you'll need to use a screwdriver to pop that off. Looks like I'm going the screwdriver route. So you need to pop off this rubber cap right here. That'll give you access to get down to the, where the tab is. Then you'll need a socket. In the case of a Yamaha, it's 12 millimeter, I believe. Yes, it is. So you'll need to loosen that up until you can turn this tab. I'm going to raise the motor back up here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So right now, this tab is dead center. 
And I think the reason for that is that the uh, person that or I was a previous owner of this had a lot of work done in the motor including replacing the water pump and since the water pump was located here in the lower unit this has been taken off and then put back on I can see that it's been done recently so you need to loosen this up you only need to loosen it up enough so you can turn this okay if your boat is pulling to the right that would be starboard you need to move the trailing edge that's the back end of this tab to the right and there's different adjustments here which I'll show here in a minute if it's pulling to the left that would be port you would turn the trailing edge that's the back of this to the left and not full both ways you want to do this in micro adjustments and then make some tests so in most cases yeah this one has it too there are little hash marks engraved on the bottom of the uh, now, I'm not going to call it a cavitation plate, but this part of your motor, I know people call it cavitation plate, anti-aeration plate, you can call it whatever you want. It's part of the lower unit. So, I'm not going to get into the nomenclature thing. So we want to make a minor adjustment here. So here it is all the way up. I, I put the motor all the way up so hopefully you can see this. I'm under a tree right now there's and it's cloudy out so there's not a lot of light out here but right there is dead center then there are three hash marks to the right three hash marks to the left I'm gonna move this too because it had really severe torque steer once I get it over there to where it's lined up with that mark on two I'm gonna tighten this back up and that'll be the setting I'll use when I take this out on the water again and if it was too much and it starts pulling to the left or it becomes difficult to turn to the right I can take this and turn it back one notch if it did not correct it enough I could take it over to the next hash mark so this is what corrects torque steer and don't forget to put your rubber cap back in the top well this rubber cap on a Yamaha here has a, a taper to it. it it's one end's bigger than the other so you want to make sure you get it back on there the right way and if it gets ornery like this one's being I'll just spray a little WD-40 on this it'll drop right in a little lubrication on there this should go right back in there remember lubrication is important for a lot of things So there we go. So as you can see the adjustment isn't all that tough and here I did it on a, uh, a, a Yamaha outboard. Yamaha, I know somebody's going to want to correct that. Grammar police are always out there. Uh, and yes I know I'm going to get comments on I call it the wrong thing or no I'm doing it wrong or it's that's not the right way. I've been doing this over 50 years, been out on the river. I grew up along the Mississippi River here. So yes, I know boats, I know how to do these things and that is the correct way to do it. Might sound a little bit arrogant, but that's the right way. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up, always help the channel. I'm Roger in the shop, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.